Hello everyone. This video is going to be about triggers. And <clears throat> triggers as far as what happens once you've reached um, the recovery, like your you found, you've overcame and survived narcissistic abuse and found closure for yourself as far as um, getting on with your life and going no contact with your narcissist. <clears throat> but before I get to that, um, I first of all want to extend my apologies to all of you. Um, I know I had made a promise that I was going to, to launch my fitness channel and a lot of things have really been coming up on me left and right. I mean, I'm healthy. Don't get me wrong. I'm in good health. I'm well. I'm strong as ever. And um, it's just a lot of things between job interviews and um, doctor appointments, you know, dental appointments, uh, taking th care of things with my fiance and getting him to places on top of that. So. Like I said, I've been really relatively busy in this course, you know, making sure that I get my gym workouts in because that there is a number one priority. And I've had some challenges here and there, uh, things trying to get in the way, but I stay focused and I stay determined and I just uh, put it on the back burner no matter what. Unless if it's like something like life or death, something going on with myself or my fiance or any of my kids or grandkids, that there would be different. But anyway, um, I've um, plateaued for a while and I changed things up. Um, I'm down to like, I finally lost one pound, so I've been 216 for a while. So I finally got the scale to drop another pound, so I'm down to 215. Uh, from 260, so I've lost 45 pounds. So I got another 20, I believe another 25, I believe more to go with my late, with my uh, weight loss journey. journey. <clears throat> and I'm doing my Shanti's Insanity and uh, yoga and boot camp with a mixture of other things. So I've been, I've been well, just been extremely busy to no end. And um, things are looking up. Um, I will be, um, you know, hopefully be working soon. Uh, been getting, like I said, I've been getting interviews left and right, unfortunately. No offers yet. But I'm just going to keep banging on the door like I always have. It doesn't get me down. Um, but anyway, without further ado, this is about triggers. And I remember in some of my videos back, I mentioned about, well, that's part of coming with, with the territory of overcoming narcissistic abuse by your narcissist, that you, you have certain triggers. It could be something as small as like a song or maybe something that someone says that can trigger something, maybe something that kind of, maybe something that maybe your narc had said to you. Or it could be a certain song, it could be a movie, um, it could be a number of things. Maybe a certain food, uh, something that's beaten into your head by an artist that's saying, well, you'll never make it, or you'll never be, mount anything, or something, like learning something new and you can't quite comprehend it and you got those voices those tapes playing off in your head well lately I'd say about the past month um, I decided to go back to a therapist and um, not so much overcoming narcissistic abuse but more of triggers because I want to be able to overcome those triggers and really minimize them so much that I won't even notice that it's a trigger or just think nothing of it. And a therapist that I've been seeing, she's been very good. Um, she's uh, 
I've told her about my narcissism channel, and by all means, she encourages me to do so. But even if she encourage, even if she were to try to discourage me, I'd still keep doing it because if I, if my therapist were to try to discourage me, then I would have fired her a long time ago. But anyway, she's really good. She really listens to you. She really, uh, really helps you. She, I mean, she just really understands me, and to me, that's important. And um, I'll have to say one thing that for those of you that see my video of uh, that letter that my lard butt sister wrote me a long time ago, about around the time that I came home from um, arthroscopic knee surgery last year, that um, she had written me a real nasty letter basically because I wrote. My narc mother, I, I, no contact, and I uh, wish to have no contact with her, and all of this stuff. Of course, my lord, but sister always has the need to feel like she has to put her two cents into in, into it. But she, if, if you were to check out the video, for those of you that haven't seen it, um, check that video out on this channel because she really wrote some really nasty things. Even gave me a uh, dumbass diploma you know and say well put this along with your worthless degrees and thinking about that that's her projection of her being worthless because she can't accomplish anything she went to college one time and she's so stupid she couldn't even last two, she couldn't even last a quarter and now she works for some bank and thinks she's she's um, hot shit and really as dumb as she is I'm quite surprised that they even hired her I know she's been working there for quite for as long as I can remember and um, she's she's never gonna get anywhere in life but that letter was just projecting her her weaknesses and how stupid she is onto me to make me look stupid when really I have the college degrees and that I've accomplished more things in my life than she'll ever have and no I'm not rich I don't have money coming on my ass and I don't need to have a whole lot of money coming on my ass to be happy as long as I have the basics like a roof over my head food clothing a very reliable vehicle to drive and insured and everything else then I have every and on top of it the very most important thing is God or if I have God I got everything so here's what I learned from my therapist and I told her it has something to do with learning some things over again um, and I have um, worked a few jobs here and there only temporarily and when I try to learn a job I at times keep doubting myself and I told my therapist this I was like I don't know if I'm gonna learn it's like I keep doubting myself like am I ever going to learn this even though I'm here at this job for a short period of time Am I going to be able to learn this? You know, and I, I think I can't get it or can't comprehend. And this trigger plays in my head with my Lord But Sister's letter. And I shared all this with my therapist. And basically, I told her where it came from. When I start feeling frustrated that I can't feel like I'm not going to learn this or I feel like I don't comp I'll never comprehend this, it's a trigger. From the letter that my lord but sister said in that letter saying I'll never amount to anything saying that um, my grammar is bad nobody will hire me uh, saying that my grammar is just as bad as a level of a housekeeper type of thing that I'm lucky if I'll ever get a job at a Walmart or can't look people in the eye maybe not Walmart but uh, maybe the most I'll ever have is a job like a motel or hotel maids shit like that 
And I've shared all this with my therapist. And basically, you know what my therapist said? And this makes so much sense. And it's helped me um, change my thinking. And basically, you call, you just give it a name. Whatever that trigger is, you give it a name. Like, this is an example. With this example I just shared. And say, Lord, bud, shut up. You ain't shit. I'll accomplish more than you'll ever have. And when I call out the lard butt name, when something comes to where I can't grasp something or feel a little hopeless or whatever, I automatically call it lard butt because that's where that trigger comes from. My lard butt sister. So, we keep saying that over and over and over again. I'm basically, I'm reprogramming my thinking. I'm reprogramming my, myself and not allowing that trigger to have a stronghold on me. And it no longer does. Really been working on eye contact. It was something that I've always had since I was a kid. Ever since kindergarten. And been working pretty darn hard about that. Not to please her, my Lord but sister, but I know it's something quite essential that I need to do. And I have to show people I mean things by looking them in the eye when I say it. So, other than that, any other triggers that come up, and I know where it comes from, like it was something, if something from my gold digging sister would say, or if I'm trying to accomplish to get a certain thing, or whatever it is, and say something, maybe it can't say something from gold digger number one. It's like, you know what? At least I don't have to have a man. I said, okay, gold digger number one, my youngest bio sister. At least I don't have to have a man. To get me jewelry or whatever it is. I can get it myself. And it's funny. She puts on this facade about her marriage being all that hard work and sacrifice. Yeah, really. And what my fiance told me, what her husband told him. And this was a while back. Um, about around Christmas time with my Blading and enabling fathers last Christmas with the family at my gold digging sister's house. Basically, her husband told my fiance, let's just cut it straight and to the point. He basically just kind of said in so few words that their marriage is pretty much arranged. It's more like, hey, I don't have dual, I mean, um, joint bank accounts with her. She has her money, I have mine. So I know that her life is nothing but fake. And of course, my narc mom obviously lives her life through her golden child daughter, the gold digger. And she'll always be a gold digger. And I remember a while back when my late enabling father was still alive, and this was years ago, and me and my gold digging sister got into it. I don't even know what we argued about, but I basically said, hey, you're nothing without the man you're with. And my late and enabling father just kind of told me to shut up. And, but he knew that what I was saying was true. And I ignored my enabling father and kept telling her that she'll never be anybody without her man. And even to this day, She'll be nothing and she'll never will have anything if it weren't for her, her husband, so-called husband. Their marriage is pretty much arranged. But she wants to live this facade like, oh, everything's all hunky-dory. Everything's so sweet in paradise. Yeah, right. I can see the brother. But anyway, don't mean to keep rambling on. But I figure I should share this with you as far as overcoming triggers that you can overcome them and you can minimize them by just calling it out the name. Wherever it triggers to your narcissist or siblings, in fact, 
just call it out by name. You want to call it a nickname instead of the actual sibling's name or whatever, do it. Just like with my lard butt sister, I just love calling her lard because she always will be a lard butt. She's always been jealous of me ever since we were children. And she will continue to be jealous of me for as long as she lives. But anyway, um, I thought that I'll at least give you at least heads up about what I've been up to. And um, I'm fine. Everything's cool. Just just been extremely busy. So, um, like I said, uh, I really want to extend my apologies again of not being able of saying I was going to la launch my fitness channel. And some, you know, unfortunately, some things out of my control came up to where I was unable to. So I'm going to put that on the back burner for a while. I haven't really changed my mind doing the channel. I believe I still have only two videos for that channel. Just haven't launched the channel and uploaded those videos yet. Uh, I I don't really know when I'll get to it. Um, so many things that's been going on right now. Good things. Just been had to get very very busy. So um, until things can settle down a little bit, then I'll be able to do. And I'll definitely what I'll do is that. I'll launch the channel when my schedule allows, upload the videos, and then I'll make the announcement, hey, you know, my video, my fitness video is, is up and running, come check it out. So instead of announcing when I think I'll have the fitness channel going on, what I'll do is really wait for things to settle down a little bit, and I will definitely just, whenever my schedule allows, go ahead, launch the channel upload the videos and then uh, I'll make an announcement here on my channel here on my narcissism channel and let y'all know when it's um, up and running so anyway uh, the next video that I'm going to talk about is going to be about taking back my power ever since I went no contact with my narcissistic mother and of course her, her flying monkeys will actually they basically cut me cut me off of them which is like i said it's a blessing basically they've done me a favor so that will be what that's what the next video will be and um i will um go ahead and make that video here uh pretty much after this video so anyway stay tuned for that this is mary allen mary allen signing off and as always i wish you love peace and happiness. Thank you. Take care. Bye for now.